Greetings from the medicine cabinet. I'm Chill Pill, and this is Not Bad, the show where I take songs I previously disliked and see if I like them now. I was not expecting to have to put a song from this artist in Not Bad, but here we are. The next song we're going to do is Sovereign by Boss Fight. I'm proud to say that I discovered Boss Fight before he came on to Monster Cat because I listened to his song Mescalink, which I thought was really cool. I also really liked Knock'em. I actually bought his EP Hex, and I tend to like the songs that he puts on Monster Cat. When I saw that he was going to produce a dubstep track, I was surprised that I hadn't heard that from him before. I'm, I'm sure that he had done that before, at least dabbled in it, but Sovereign... I felt was way too slow for what he was trying to do and that boss fight was much better at faster, more punchy genres than dubstep sometimes is, specifically the genre of dubstep that he was going for. I remember where I was when I was listening to this song and I was just not very impressed at all and very disappointed that I wasn't impressed with a boss fight song. But let's see if that changes. Here's Sovereign by Boss Fight. That's a cool intro. Very eerie. I don't know how he designed these sounds, but they work with the theme he's going for. Oh, this is cool. What a start to the song. Oh. It threw me off of the rhythm a bit, but I like that. Ooh, the arpeggio was working with this. Whoa! The sound design is cool, it's a classic boss fight. Yeah, this is quite a banger. Oh, wow. Ha, yeah. I don't even have words to say to this. Just like noises. Oh, man. How does he design all these songs? All these sounds, I mean. Well, the songs too. Oh, that was a cool flip on the melody and how it just keeps going to drive you forward with the midsection. Oh man. I don't know what else to say about this right now. But if I don't say anything, it's going to fall out of fair use, so... <laughs> oh, this is going to throw me off of the rhythm. Uh, I didn't. <laughs> I'm musically inclined enough to be able to keep up. Oh, I got faked out just now. This vibe is not preferable, per se. But I love that. Ha! <laughs> I like that too.
Pop! I love when he intersperses like that. The different bases. I love how he does those things with the melody that should sound absolutely awful and technically do, <laughs> but work really well with the with how crazy the song is. This is the kind of song where if I tried to imitate it with beatboxing, people would look at me like, what are you doing? <laughs> You're so weird. He does a lot of cool like cinematic things here. The only thing is this may not be a song that I would listen to a lot. Like I would listen to this maybe if I was really feeling like some heavy dubstep. And then once I was done with this, I'd probably be done. <laughs> that's like, okay, that's the threshold of what I can handle. Even the things that sound awful to the human ear really give off that vibe of like just desperation and like throwing stuff out. And you know, it's kind of recklessness, you know? And I actually like how he did that. It's hard for producers to do that in their songs. And I also just thought especially the intro and the midsection as well were particularly epic. The world that he built with this song in just about four minutes and with a dubstep song at that, which is meant to just be heavy, was phenomenal. He did a great job. That being said, there's not a lot to take away from this song. Like, it wasn't catchy by any stretch. I don't think that I would really remember much about this song after I walked out, and so this didn't really leave the mark with me that it could have, per se. All of that taken into account, I think I would probably give this song actually an 8 out of 10. I mean... He did a lot of things in this song, and they tended to work with the mood that he was going for, which is hard to do in a song by itself. It takes a lot of improvement as a producer from when you start in order to get to that point where you can do that. But he takes it to a different level here. It's actually really cool, all the things that he does, and I can appreciate this for more than just the musicality of it, which in some aspects actually covers up some of the musical imperfections of this song because you can chalk it up to the story or the world building. So you can't do that with every song, but I feel like this song merits being able to do that. Moving on from a song that was made from a new artist that actually came in with a classic artist, namely Efixa, we're coming into the debut of an artist that was in collaboration with a classic artist. And that was a very confusing way to say that this song is Falling by Trivecta and Wooly. I like rhythm when it's done right, but when it's done wrong, I just really don't like it. <laughs> it's not that I'm a rhythm hater because there are people out there that are rhythm haters. I appreciate a good rhythm song. I don't tend to appreciate not good rhythm songs. And this, I felt, was in the category of a not good rhythm song. I also felt that the emptiness of the vocal sections wasn't necessarily used to the song's advantage. We're gonna see if that changes. Let's go. Falling by Trivecta and Wooly. Ooh. I can see that Trivecta was the one that started the track. This sounds very Trivecta. Ooh, that was interesting. Oh, what did they do there? Is that a regular vocal on top of a vocoder deal? This is a lot better of an intro than I remember it being. Oh, cool art. Oh, cool use of chorus, too. I don't know that I'm able to pick out chorus very often in songs. Unless we're talking about Voices by Coven, but that's a different kind of chorus. Yeah. 
The sound design is all cool. I just don't think it works with the song. Ah, oh, I want it to work with the song though, because all the sound design is actually really cool. What are they gonna do next? I wanted the ARB to do something more. I just burp. Oh yeah! This is what I'm looking for. Yes! Perhaps intersperse the bases into this part. Oh, are they gonna have another rhythm focus section? Yeah. It's cool. Sound design wise. Yikes is the word that is <laughs> coming to my mind, but I don't know that that quite captures the essence of the song in as optimistic a way as it should. <laughs> this song is a conundrum because as a composition, I don't find it extremely coherent. If we were to use closed minded words, I liked Trivecta's contributions to the song better than Wooly's. Now, like I said, that's a closed-minded way of looking at it because it's very, very possible, in fact probable, that Wooly contributed things that were melodic to the song and Trivecta contributed things that were heavy to the song. And it's not necessarily that I would enjoy the song more if Wooly had no part in making it. Because, from what I know about w the things that don't seem like Trivecta, they sounded good. So there were plenty of things about the song that I liked. Uh, as a whole, I think there were some disappointing things about it. A, a theme tends to be in some of these songs that I like the song, except for the drops. <laughs> which doesn't make me seem like much of an EDM fan. But yeah, I didn't think that Falling was a bad song. I wouldn't skip it if it were to come up again. I would maybe skip some parts of it actually, which kind of affects my rating. I would give it a five and a half out of 10 because the things that didn't work with this song are good in their own right. Like the sound design itself is great. It just wasn't necessarily put in the right place and the right place is not the song. <laughs> so it, the song would have been better if those sounds were saved for a different song. This sounds like a more generic eliminate. Oh, that's cool. This is not boring to me. 